G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for one of the last trade updates you'll see on the channel. Obviously today, uh, as the time you watch this in Australia, it is going to be the start of the trade deadline day, which means that all the deals, well most of the deals, will have to have come by some sort of resolution by the end of the day, otherwise obviously they won't go through. So um, I guess this video is a little bit of a preview as for what to expect today. The first thing I will say is that uh, don't expect any deals before 3 p.m. Melbourne time, because apparently there is a rule that clubs can only lodge trades after 3 p.m. Uh, in Melbourne. So that's 1 p.m. for Perth viewers. I know we've got a fair few Perth boys in the chat. The reason for this is uh, naturally to make a uh, reasonable sort of finish to the, the trade period, a bit more of an exciting finish for the viewers. So that's at least the way the AFL sees it. Uh, so what we're going to see is a lot of conjecture, a lot of dead air for several hours throughout the day. And then, um, yeah, 3 p.m. Melbourne time, we'll start getting the updates thick and fast. So in the meantime, you can use this video as a little bit of a preview as to, uh, or a snapshot rather, of, of what is still to come. Um, and we're going to go through some of the specific deals uh, that we expect to happen today. Before we crack on, I have started my uh, draft series that I'm going to be continuing up until the draft, guys. So if you have any interest in learning about the draft and the various draftees, I made my first video on a player called Clay Hall from Western Australia. It should be the previous video on this channel. So if you want to start developing your uh, your draft knowledge and awareness, uh, as I am doing in addition to actually making these videos, uh, go give that a watch and uh, also stay tuned for more content like that. Cool, so I'm gonna raffle through some of the deals yet to happen without going into massive depth, but uh, obviously we're gonna start off with the Jack Ginevan one, and the reason I'm gonna start there is because it flows through, well, Hawthorne's got about six deals that need to get done today. So uh, we'll start with Jack Ginevan. That story obviously broke 24 hours ago, and we've already covered that on this channel, um, but what to expect today? Ginevan is a contracted player, I believe. So yeah, he's contracted until the end of 2024, which means there's no absolute certainty this deal happens. But if Ginevan is pretty keen on it, and there is a bit of a suggestion by Mitch Cleary, I think that uh, Collingwood are actually pretty open to this, more open to this than they're necessarily letting on. If that's the case, and we've got at least two parties interested, then I think a deal is more likely than not. So it does say that a future second round pick is the expected asking price. That was what I sort of suggested in the last video. According to an article on the AFL website uh, last night, it appears that a second round pick in next year's draft is likely going to be the asking price and uh, I think that will get done today. Another deal Hawthorne need to get done is Mabio Chol to, uh, from the Gold Coast Suns, of course. Uh, I talked about how y uh, yesterday the picks this, in this year's draft are probably, well, both sides probably don't want to touch what they've got this year um, in terms of draft picks. Obviously, Hawthorne had their own bid coming for father-son Will McCabe in this year's draft, so they won't want to give up pick 33. And similarly, Gold Coast have probably got the points that they need for this year's academy picks, and they're looking to build assets in next year's draft. So a future pick is what is expected to go down for this. I think uh, the Hawks were pushing for this to be a future third, and the Suns wanted a future second for this deal. What could be an interesting development is now that the Brisbane Lions, are there, they're targeting Brandon Ryan from Hawthorne. This is a story I actually haven't covered on this channel yet, uh, but he was the mid-season draft pick pickup for the Hawks mid-year, played three games as a 25-year-old key forward. I don't think Hawthorne are necessarily keen to give him up, and it has also been reported this is separate to the potential Gunston deal as well. So Brisbane want this deal outside of the Gunston deal. But the logic here is that if Hawthorne acquire another second round pick, either next, probably next year, if they're offered a future second, which is what's being reported for Brandon and Ryan, that could unlock the Mubby or Chol deal. That's one avenue where it could get done. The Gunston deal as well, I don't think there's any, any real concrete update on that, but of course this is a deadline for it to take place. Gunston is contracted and uh, may stay at the Brisbane Lions, but again, if this is a sensitive issue, which you know the, the, there really hasn't been too much detail about exactly what's going on with Gunston, and fair enough, it may be personal, but the more personal and sensitive it is, and the higher chance of a deal getting done in my opinion. So that one's a wait and see. So that's Chol, Ginevan, and Gunston, and potentially Brandon Ryan, who are the other two players for Hawthorne? It's first of all, Jacob Kaczynski. Again, this one has really stalled. He requested a trade to Richmond, you know, weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken. Um, again, the, the conjecture around this was, I think Hawthorne wanted pick 28 from Richmond. Richmond thought he was worth a third rounder. Well, the update that I read last night is that now Hawthorne wants a future third round pick and the Tigers have only offered a pick in the 60s this year. So that's probably more likely what they should have offered, to be honest. It may mean that the earlier report of Hawthorne wanting pick 28 might not have been accurate. I'm not too sure, but Richmond offer uh, they've lowballed Hawthorne or at least in Hawthorne's eyes which is why we probably have seen this deal stall out but I can't imagine this not getting done even if Hawthorne do get ripped off a little bit pick 64 
odd or whatever Richmond's got, that's probably going to be about right. Then the other player is Massimo D'Ambrosio, who uh, another player who requested a trade ages ago from Essendon. This deal should happen today. Now, this is a correction. I mistakenly theorized that D'Ambrosio could walk to Hawthorne as a free agent because he is uh, not being offered a spot on a senior list by Essendon. Honestly, the, the rules around this are so murky and not really that publicly accessible and even if they are they change all the time so forgive me I got that wrong I believe that if um, D'Ambrosio stays for another year at Essendon then he can walk as a free agent to Hawthorne in a year's time I'm not I'm not really too sure exactly what's going on long story short though uh, the, there needs to be a trade otherwise D'Ambrosio goes in the preseason draft and as we know Hawthorne have offered a pick 65 or whatever for D'Ambrosio. I don't think Essendon has gone for that. Otherwise, this deal would have gone down already. But again, they could just flip the Kaczynski pick that they get from Richmond and give it to Essendon, and that will get D'Ambrosio to the club. So Hawthorne's due for a very big day today. We'll move on to some other clubs. Now, it has been cryptically reported that the Asava Radagalia deal has seen some progress. So we know the background of this is that Port Adelaide uh, acquired pick 25 or whatever it is now from Fremantle as part of a, a future first split. And they offered it to Geelong and were stunned when Geelong didn't accept it. Geelong have been playing pretty hardball on this particular deal. And uh, it was a little bit murky to see exactly where this deal goes from there with Port Adelaide having, you know, no first rounder either this year or next year. I'm not sure exactly what Geelong could have really been pushing for. But cryptically on the AFL website, it just says that there has been progress in this space without really giving any details. This one will probably be one of the ones we hear about right at the end of trade, uh, the deadline day, so to speak. We do have an update on Ivan Soldo potentially joining Port Adelaide. There is a formal offer, and it looks like Port Adelaide have offered a future second round pick uh, and pick 41 or 49 this year, one, one of those two. I think it's 41 this year and a future second round pick to Richmond for Soldo. Now, Richmond don't really want to give up Soldo, but Soldo is pretty keen to get there. You know, he wants to be a number one ruck. He's not South Australian, if I'm not mistaken. So there seems to be an increasing expectation that Soldo does get to Port Adelaide. Of course, uh, Richmond hold all the cards here as he is contracted. But Jordan Sweet is expected this will get done today as well. Again, I'm not really sure what the holdup is. Maybe it's just waiting on the Radigalia deal, so to speak. And uh, But it is expected that's either a swap for 41 or 49 uh, to the Bulldogs for Jordan Sweet. Again, we, we don't really have too much more clarification on Zerk Thatcher and Xavier Dersmer. Again, this one is mooted as a player-for-player a, a player swap, or at least that's what Essendon wants. Uh, Port Adelaide want to see some sort of draft upgrade going to them, uh, even if Dersmer does leave the footy club. So I guess one update is that Essendon, as by means of a pick swap, ended up with pick 35 yesterday. Um, so in theory, that could be part of this deal. Otherwise, I'm not really sure why Essendon uh, would have gone looking for that pick. They, were, they got involved in that four-club swap uh, that involved Caulfield and Dow switching clubs as well. So was that done in a way that Essendon gives up 35 and maybe gets 48 back and they keep their own 30? That could make sense to me. As I suggested uh, yesterday, uh, the day before, um, there is an increasing belief that Elijah Hollands will actually go to Carlton. There was there was a uh, cold, cold water port all over that. You know, a few days ago they said maybe it won't happen. Now more so than ever, it seems very very likely. And not only that, it was originally reported as a future second round pick was going to go to the Gold Coast Suns and Elijah Hollands would go to Carlton. This follows my own personal speculation how it seems more likely Gold Coast kind of driving this move. It seems his price has now dropped to a future third round pick. So expect this one to get done today. The wording of the article that I read seems very confident that this deal gets done. One move that is not expected to happen today is Elliot Himmelberg joining his brother at the GWS Giants. This one was contingent on Adelaide finding another forward to replace Himmelberg. They obviously missed out on Marby Chol. I wasn't sure if this deal would go ahead regardless because uh, there, we still kept hearing about it, but it does appear that Adelaide now are unwilling to give up the contracted Himmelberg. I believe he is a free agent in 12 months time, so that might have been their motivation, but they're obviously preserving their interests for uh, for this season, and then they'll see if, well, after that, but they could lose him in 12 months' time. So those are the deals that, uh, that re require some sort of update and climax, so to speak. Um, and then there's a few, there's always a few on a trade deadline day where you don't really see that coming, right? So not every trade period, but sometimes you'll just get a few last minute deadline day deals where you're just like, I didn't even see a single article about that. Um, and I'll throw some names in the ring that this could potentially occur, uh, apply to. One is Scott Lysett. I've seen a bit of an indication last night that uh, obviously we know that he was kind of considering retirement or considering offers from other clubs. We haven't heard a peep about it since, but an article on the AFL website does suggest that Scott Lysett's future could hinge on trade deadline day. So if Port Adelaide are getting successfully two Ruckman in, obviously that leaves Lysett in limbo. So Lysett could be one that finds his way to another club 
on deadline day. So it'll be interesting to be in his shoes right now. I presume he's got some sort of plan. I don't think he's necessarily going to retire. The article suggests he's got some interest from some Victorian clubs. Uh, my guess is that he's already probably got someone locked and loaded and they're just waiting for these deals to go through and then Lysett will go through. That's just a bit of a wild prediction, but I can't see Lysett staying at Port Adelaide if they recruit two Ruckman this trade period. The other one is Jeremy Sharp to Fremantle. Now I think he's out of contract, but this nearly happened 12 months ago. I uh, don't know if he, I don't think he's been formally delisted, and I also think Fremantle will be looking for some experienced players, particularly some outside run losing Liam Henry, and of course Lockie Shaws as well. So Jeremy Sharp to Fremantle could be one of those deadline day deals. Uh, Fremantle haven't invested in this year's draft to walk away from this trade period having just lost two players and only reinforce next year's draft. Uh, it seems like an odd un Fremantle esque move coming from someone who's paid a bit of attention to them over the last few years. So I'll predict Jeremy Sharp does get the Fremantle in a deadline day deal. And uh, the other one is Jack Billings. Now, we haven't really heard too much about him other than that he was potentially open to a move, exploring his options. St. Kilda, pretty happy for him to explore those options. Uh, but in terms of a potential suitor, there was a little bit from Collingwood, maybe a little bit from Melbourne, if I'm not mistaken. But nothing concrete. So we might see him find a new club. Uh, there could be, you know, it seems like a potential like Geelong kind of deal there. Could he go to Fremantle, to be honest? Collingwood probably even have some interest again now if Ginevan's leaving. So those are the three I'd nominate. So I'd say Scott Lysett, I'd say Jeremy Sharp, and I will say Jack Billings find new clubs. But let me know in the comments anything, um, any suggestions from you. Hopefully it's an interesting day, guys. I will be back um, as soon as the trade period ends. I'm going to aim to do a video and get it up for you tomorrow evening as well. And then we'll start with some review content, who actually won the trade period, etc. And of course, look out for the draft content as well. But for now, thanks for all your support this year. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.